as both of you know, we are uh, we're from Shakri. Um, it never works, does it? There we go. I just wanted to introduce us a little bit. So I'm Chris Wilkes-Green. I look after the UK side of the operation. Most of you guys know Jack already and Javier, who look after the uh, international side of things, um, all the Latin America, the European bits and pieces. But um, yeah, I just wanted to take a, a, a minute to introduce us from the UK side of things, uh, as it's the newest part of the business. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's probably one of the, the, the biggest growth areas that we're seeing at the moment. The UK market seems to love WSO2 and is really you know, taking it on board. Um, in terms of Shakra as an organisation, we've been working with WSO2 for the last six years um, and within the UK for the last two years uh, and building up a really good, excellent technical team here. Um, we're an international company um, and uh, you know, we've got a very good support network there and um, yeah, really sort of pushing the, the UK side of things at the moment with, with you know, some great clients and big projects that we're working on at the moment. Um, in terms of what we do, in case you don't know, um, we generally work either alongside systems integrators or we can outsource projects ourselves. Um, we specialize in uh, consultancy services uh, around architecture, development, uh, training and support. Uh, what we wanted to talk to you today, as uh, I'm going to hand over to Jack in a moment, um, we wanted to try and find a solution to you know, get, get, get a quick start working a little bit faster and having a, uh, an automated application that's going to build your uh, entire platform hopefully in 10 minutes and 29 seconds. Jack told me earlier the first time he did this manually, it took him about five months, so we've compressed all of that. Um, we've got you know, all of our you know, collective guys around the world working on this application. Um, it's very much a version one release at the moment, so hopefully it's going to work smoothly. I'm, I'm assured it will be. It certainly did, it certainly did this morning. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to compress that all into uh, just over 10 minutes, and it's going to have your platform up and running with all the bits and pieces that you need. Um, working nice and smoothly. So I'll hand you over to Jack, who's going to talk, talk technical with you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Many good friends around here. Um, so yeah, um, I, I wanted to start uh, this uh, speech because uh, WSO2 asked me to explain some of my experience on, on the field using WSO2, etc., and how uh, all those experience have come to some new solutions, okay? So to start, I'm going to spend just one minute showing you a form here. I'm going to fire a task. Hope you can see it, we brought this screen. And uh, from there, I'll continue my speech up here. Uh, everybody can see this screen, more or less? Okay. So this is just a form. I can select uh, our virtualization provider. AWS, Google, Vagrant, Docker, whatever. We've been in many keynotes already. We know about these technologies. We heard all these platforms and how uh, we can engage uh, WSO2 solutions into them and use them and scale and etc. So this is basically the easiest way to do it. If I select the AWS, it's going to ask me for some access key and secret. It's going to ask me from name uh, number of nodes the size of the nodes I want to create, uh, the regions, uh, and the solutions I want to install. Okay, so this is just a customized sample for this demo, so we can fit the whole constructions of this solution in this 10 minutes. So, in a perfect world, if I say submit, we will start the 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 process. If it says error, don't tell me. <laughs> Okay, and here I'm going to start my clock. And let's check if it's going to be 10 minutes. So, first there was nothing. Uh, I would like to speak a, a bit of uh, uh, my experience. I've been working with WSO2 uh, for a long time, pre-carbon 4.0. Uh, uh, that was, uh, from my point of view, the dark ages, uh, where you have to pick and choose different solutions, and if you pick different versions, it won't work. Then came Carbon uh, 4.2, and everything just magically start to fit everything in place. Uh, from there, uh, I don't see. Uh, wait, uh, I don't see the notes I put in the in my PPT, so I'll have to do it. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah no, no problem. Okay, so that's the idea. First, there was nothing, okay? Uh, we were suffering a lot. Uh, since uh, September, that was September 2013, Carbon 4.2 came out. This, there has been over 67 releases of WSO2 tools, new version, new version, new version, that makes more than 20 a year, more than one a month. So it's really impressive. We are seeing uh, some other solutions coming that, is, that are going to be, uh, you are going to be able to integrate with all these new uh, technologies way better with Carbon 5, Carbon 6, that they are coming. It's going to be everything more lightweight. So uh, that was the idea. I put because I was afraid the demo wasn't going to work. And one of my past experiences is PPTs always compile. So I put the screens here just in case they, they, they were not to work, but OK. And came back to my past experience. So I've been working in quite a few projects ever since, uh, quite big companies, petrol companies, uh, UK public administration, huge projects in the public administration, uh, kind of a really special customer, the, 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 well, basically any administration, public administration in the world cannot imagine the Spanish or the Latin American public administration is really bad, so don't don't speak bad about the UK administration. You have to see other ones to really understand that you're top notch here in, in the UK. Uh, so um, from my, my point of view, these this, uh, experiences do uh, have to do more, uh, usually when you engage with the customers, to uh, be able to explain them uh, what they are getting into, okay? WSO2 is basically in all the tools in the integration arena, and usually all your customers that are going into uh, the WSO2 solutions, they already know maybe Oracle, IBM, other technologies, Mule, I don't know. And their uh, requests for proposals and their uh, solutions, what they want, uh, come biased by the, what the knowledge they already have. Usually, you can build quite faster things using WSO2 tools. If you learn the stack, all the solutions, you are able to give uh, really fast solutions, really, let's say, financially more uh, attractive for the customers. Uh, we all know it's we are working in WSO2 is Apache.0 licensing. So those type of things, uh, usually you have to explain to the customer if you are from looking from my side. If you are looking from the side of the customer, uh, because you are uh, maybe in the public administration or you are uh, planning to build uh, a solution for you, you must understand that you are working in a different arena. Okay? So. If you see the licenses uh, contracts from some of these big players, companies in the integration arena, they are so complicated that nobody says, I don't understand, okay? But they're really complicated. Here is quite easy and it's really uh, very good for, for the business. In both cases, the operating costs of these solutions are, can be really uh, lower. I mean, if you have an integration uh, platform using the company that starts with O, you, you need a really big uh, team of engineers to just give support to that platform. Here you don't need that. You can manage to have a, a lower uh, grade of engineers, so your operational costs can be driven down really fast, okay, and making uh, some of the uh, solutions you can achieve here way easier, way cheaper, okay? So, lessons learned. Well, one of my personal lessons learned this past week is don't give my wife the maps if you're driving in a foreign country. It's, uh, 
at least if you are in a hurry to do a check-in in a hotel or something like that. But uh, yeah, we learn a lot of lessons. One of the lessons uh, uh, I learned is the um, uh, the customers ask the same questions. So if I go to Chile, or I go to New Zealand, or I go to Venezuela, UK, Spain, they ask you the same questions. They have the same requirements. Maybe they express it the different ways. But uh, usually, they, they come from other uh, type of tools, other companies, other solutions. Maybe they have good luck, and now they have to change because they have to go to open source, like it's happening in public administration all over the world. Or maybe they just need something that is more economical, feasible, OK? And they are asking all the time the same questions. And usually, those questions tell you exactly what went wrong. So if they're telling you, I have this, but the ESB is doing this, and this, and this, and that, they're asking these detailed questions because that's where the problems they have. So it's quite easy, uh, usually, when uh, uh, we approach a new um, customer to understand what is their needs. And because we are the integration architects, we can help them. Okay? One other thing that I, I, I learned is that uh, the open source uh, people, let's say the open source uh, uh, arena guys that are working, tend to share more information with the customers. Okay? okay, while they're, when they are in a private uh, solutions uh, or other type of solutions, they tend to share less information. So the, the customers want to know, well, up to a certain limit, obviously, but the customers usually want to know what they're getting, how things work, how you're going to solve things. Yesterday, uh, uh, and, and that's where we can help the customers. I was speaking with a good friend, well, I would like to think he's a good friend about uh, problems you can find uh, when a company grows. And we were speaking about the toilet issue. So when the company starts growing, sooner or later, you're going to need more salespeople, more developers, more, and your installations grow smaller and smaller because you have more and more people. Sooner or later, you're going to reach the toilet issue where you don't have enough toilets. So in the integration arena, when we are working, that toilet issue is going to happen. So when we start doing the projects, we've been doing many, many projects over the years. We know the architects, the companies we are working in this arena, we know which issues we are going to find. And we must tell the, the customer. That's sharing the information. That's a good lesson we learn to tell them beforehand, you're going to reach this point. You're going to reach this other point. Other lesson I, I learned is the, we were mentioning before, the, the operational uh, costs, OK? Always, when you do a request for proposal, it's mentioned someplace. And then you start the project and start working, 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 working. few months maybe a year and something later, that's the end of the project. And then you start making the numbers. And this is going to be the cost to operate this. If you lost sight of the operational costs during the project, you might find at the end of the project, it's not worth it for the customer. You're not giving him any new value. It's, going to, it's costing him more than it was going to cost. So you must uh, share that information with the customer as soon as possible. So we have now 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Success. OK. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not a demo if something doesn't go wrong. So, so from lesson to solutions, OK? So what we learn? We learn that building all these solutions, platform, is complicated. But we also learn that they can be automated, okay? One of the things uh, this uh, 
presentation uh, I'm going to show you is uh, some of, techno of the technology. We have uh, some of the guys in the team in, in Latin America working with for a few months already. And they're using all these uh, tools you already saw in different keynotes, Kubernetes, Docker, all that stuff. And when, when I say to them, OK, I'm going to show you how to build a platform, they get mad with me. They say, that's not a platform. That's a solution. Well, you know, DevOps guys. And actually, I have to give them uh, the reason, because what we just built uh, here, and let, let me try to show you, uh, is that here I have opened the console of uh, AWS. As you can see, it's basically empty. I don't have nothing there. First, there was nothing. Now, after running this process, if I refresh, I can see there are volumes there. There are a few more instances. There are Elastic IP, security groups, etc., etc. So from nothing, just code, we fired uh, a system uh, with using uh, Puppet, just configuration files, and it built everything, OK, in just 10 minutes. Imagine uh, all these cases when you need to test a new release. And you say, well, the ideal thing is to test it in, in the real platform. How am I going to build a new platform just to do the testing? Well, it takes 10 minutes. And it works. And this, why they call this is a solution? Because it has embedded health systems, meaning that uh, there is process inside, checking everything is alive. And if something is not alive, you will kill that instance and build a new one. Uh, it's already closed with security groups on AWS, meaning that, well, more secure than Amazon. You're not going to get more secure than that. Uh, all the deployment scenario in there has an embedded Jenkins inside. So it deploys. All these are clusters, elastically scaled automatically, meaning that if you go over a certain amount of CPU usage, it will fire new, new uh, instances, will create new Docker instances of your cluster. Not only that, it has intelligence inside, meaning that we have created, in this case, four physical instances. But inside, you have different clusters, API Manager, ESB, Identity Server, etc. And uh, if the system sees that one of your instances is having more load than the other three, you will start moving containers inside. You don't see that. Not only that, he will learn, on, depending on the patterns you are having, the times, and he will move those instances beforehand. So it has its own kind of intelligence. It's self-healing, meaning that if I kill one of the instances, I go to AWS, we can do the test now, and delete one of the instances. A few minutes, well, minutes, a few seconds later, you will say, whoop. What's happening here? This disappeared. He, he will move the Docker instances to the other instances and recreate that server again. And once he's up, he will move again and load balance the, the clusters. So, and it's magic. So that's why the guys get mad with me when I say, we're building a platform. Actually, it's a solution, OK? And it's all WSO2, and it works. It also has dashboards. So let me show you one of the dashboards. I was telling the guys, hey, if you want me to do a demo with this, don't make me remember the URLs for the dashboards. So we have here, for example, uh, three of the dashboards. They're already they're out, out of the box dashboards. Okay. So let me show you a couple of them. Let me get the password. Okay. So these guys made an API for me to get the password, because every time you create one of these solutions, you are uh, 
having a different user and password, admin, that's standard. Let's see if I can log in. No, because I have capital. Admin. Testing. Magic. So let me see some of the dashboard. These are, you see, for example, this is, we just created the, the whole platform. You can see here all your, your machines up and running, the CPU uses, the memory, everything. Okay, we can custom this type of solutions because WSO2 is very flexible and say, okay, we are going to be lonely API manager with uh, identity server and ESB as the previous and build platforms and scale it and have the dev, test, prod, whatever is your use case, basically automatically and repeatable. You have this type of dashboard that are out of the box. You can perfectly build your own dashboards. You have there the Kubernetes dashboard, so you can see the logs, etc. So this can give you a test of the operational costs that is going to save you. So you can use a normal uh, um, engineer level, teach them what, how this thing works. If this thing happens, fire this uh, instance, and I'm over my time. So I'll take some questions, if anybody of you have any questions. But meanwhile, I'm going to kill one of the nodes. So I'm going to go to the running instances in AWS. This is the tricky part of the demo. Okay, so this minion. I'm going to kill this one, for example, okay? Oh, this one looks different. Let's do this one. Ah, well, anyway, any, any will do. Okay, and this will be instance state. Terminate, red message. Yes, terminate. If it doesn't work, no problem. This is the end of the demo, so. And if you have any questions, I will be more than glad of answering. We can build this type of solutions using WSO2, basically for any of the, of the tools they have. Uh, we have really big experience, not a big team uh, that is building all this type of stuff with identity server, CEP, well, obviously, API Manager, ESB, and all those. That's the standard WC2 solution. So uh, if you have uh, any questions, please feel free. No? Yes? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we're using Docker. Uh, so that was the part I was explaining that if uh, one of the instances, physical instances, the T2 medium is, I have five, and one of them is like 60%, and the other ones are 20%, he will say, oh, I'll start moving Docker. And because it's milliseconds, you don't have any issues. And he will do it automatically. So you, you don't see that. Before uh, firing new nodes, scaling, he will try to make the, what, they, what is the Kubernetes uh, cluster to be kind of uh, load the load across the, the cluster, uh, okay. I just killed one of the nodes of the cluster, so the physical one, I just turned it down. So in milliseconds, he moved the containers, Docker containers from here to other ones. Okay, see, to see. That's first thing, you know, give the service. Keep the service up and running. And now he'll say, what's happening with this instance? I don't know, I don't know. It just disappear. disappear. So, so in theory, if I refresh, well, maybe it's a little bit too early, but you see, this physical instance is gone, terminated. If I do a refresh around here, not yet, well, one, two, three, four, six. Yeah, here it is. He's created a new one. Magic. And works. 
perfectly. Actually, we are using for all this uh, carbon 4.4 or 4.2 solutions, so it's ESB 4.9, so it's the actual C4 and uh, base platform of WSO2. And with C5 and C6, it will be much more efficient, okay, to do this, exactly the same thing. Okay? Thank you. And thank you for coming. I just prepared a lunch for you up there. <laughs> okay, enjoy. Perfect. <laughs>